Krauss Hardy and I moved here in 2000, uh, the fall of 2000 from New York City. Well I have to say playing in the horn quartet is, is pretty fun. Um, we have you know just over the years played so many things together it's been very much a, kind of a, a fun thing, done, done a lot of concerts, worked hard you know and really gelled in a way that I think is harder to do in a lot of other things where you just sort of show up and you all play together for two or three rehearsals and then you're sort of done. When we're in shape, <laughs> to all in shape at the same time, you know, it really goes well together. I think actually the favorite performance that I did here for horn was actually another horn quartet thing. Uh, Chris Margo and Jean, we put together a program called The History of the Horn, and it was sort of a combination of history and a horn and sort of Christmas stuff, and we had all our sort of horn paraphernalia, and we went around doing that. And it was really fun, I and mean, people loved it, you know. It was, you know, just that joy and, and connecting with a group of people one-on-one -on -one is, is just really fun particularly in a chamber kind of setting. I teach horn up at Keene State College, and uh, it's a very small community college up in Keene, and, you know, it varies from two to three to four students, and I guess I've been doing that for six or seven years. A lot of fun. I think teaching is great because it really sort of helps you to be able to articulate and determine what it is that you're doing and how to communicate that to somebody. Um, there's nothing like teaching to like solidify one's own practice. So that's really great. <laughs> Maybe All right. I don't, I don't, I don't play for a while. <laughs> right. okay. I think he's I'm going to start. <laughs> I grew up in the Berkshires and um, went away to college at Oberlin and when I came back from Oberlin, um, UMass needed a teaching assistant, so I ended up going to UMass and 
um, being more of Fox teaching assistant. She, she's kind of like the energizer bunny. <laughs> she, just, she just always kind of seemed the same and she was so unflappable and um, nurturing in, in her quiet way. She wasn't really effusively nurturing, but she was a wonderful role model. Um, and if she believed in you, she, she made that known. Helpful to me to have such a, a powerful female role model. Yeah, I would I would say for me she was very no nonsense, and so if I would say, well, I just really uh, my lip feels a little funny, <laughs> or I'm not really, uh, I don't think I can hit that high note. She'd say, play it, <laughs> just play it. No, nope. and nope. I I think I notice in my own teaching I take a lot of her sort of. Uh, I wouldn't say it's her techniques, it's more of her teaching style. I borrow a lot from Laura Clock's teaching style because I think she, um, at one point we were playing a gig together and I leaned over to her and I said, am I sharp? And she said, you sound great, just play. <laughs> so she just wanted to make sure that you felt, you that your sense of yourself that you were taking, that you were finding trust in your sense of yourself as a player. Yeah. I'm Laura Clock, and I was professor of horn at the University of Massachusetts for 40 years, 40 terrific years, and I was also uh, principal horn of the Springfield Symphony. It was a wonderful thing to discover that one person was really making a difference. And although I was pretty busy between the university and Springfield Symphony, and uh, after not too long, a family of my own, um, I did have some private students. And then to, to see teachers who were already here, and then my own students go out and become teachers, like Jean and Chris and uh, Aaron, and to see a number of others who then are making their own studios and spreading the gospel. <laughs> so that's been, that's been very rewarding. I think horn for me has been a community experience. I think it is for us all. Horn players tend to be communally supportive and it's one of the nice things. It's one of the reasons I actually decided I would go into music. The other thing she encouraged me to do, which I think can't be, um, measure really is to be community minded about horn playing to not just play in the big uh, highly paying gigs but to play where people were enjoying the music and having a good time and and you know play these little community jobs in summer bands and community theater and things like that um, you keep your sense of fun about not just gig, 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 gig. Yeah. We get together to play because we love to do it and it's fun and, and we enjoy making music together and I don't know about you but I, I love to share that with others, the joy that we oh, yes. find together yeah. playing. Like wow, we, yeah, we, sound, we sound decent and this is wonderful music and no one hears it. Here we are in these walls. So it's always a, a charge to get it out there somewhere. And in fact, we've, we've had a lot of fun having giant horn groups show up and play. You know, Josh Michael come over, Laura Clock, Sheffra Spiridopoulos, lots of horn players around the area who are really so much fun to play with. Fleur Barnes, um, I can't remember if we have or haven't had, has Dick Hansen ever come to one of our things? Anyway, no, lots of so. lots of local horns, Stanley Light, um, lots of fabulous friends and horn players, Aaron Lilas, um, and their wonderful colleagues and players. My name is Aaron Lilas, and um, I'm 40 years old, and I've been playing the horn since I was nine. I came to the Valley permanently in the fall of 1995 as a freshman music major at UMass. I remember when I was in high school, my teacher had said, you should go take a lesson with Laura Clock just to see what it's like, um, which I've done to my students too. She was just the most supportive person, both musically and as, as a person. 
I think a lot of people have come here to study with her and ended up just staying um, because they like the, the horn ecology around here and, and other things too. I mean, there's so much to recommend being here, but, but I think that she was probably the initial draw. Don't you think so? Yeah. yeah. Um, I ended up here because I was teaching middle school in Indiana and I was bored and I could still play pretty well. So I um, applied for Springfield Symphony, got an audition, got the job, and then there was a graduate assistantship at UMass that included woodwind quintet and assisting Laura Clock, and I got that, and it was free. So I moved out here and stayed. She's a very, 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 very nice person. And yeah, I didn't work as much with her though. I studied with her but I was more the assistant to the band director, whom I then married. She um, has a different approach than I grew up with, which was okay. It was good for me to hear. She was very kind to me, um, very patient. I think what brings the biggest smiles are remembering all of the students that have come through the program here, that I've had the opportunity to work with, um, students in Taiwan, where I did a chamber music festival, master classes in Santiago, Chile more recently uh, with my friend Eddie Brown, who's the teacher down there. Uh, and just, just getting to know people, just having some small part and sharing some small part and having them share with me. Um, and uh, likewise with Chris Mortensen and Aaron Lilas, um, with Fleur Barnes, and um, with all of the students, we had a lot of fun. I mean, I think we were serious, but they each brought their own personality, and I always felt like it was my job not to tell them how they ought to be, but to give them opportunities or ways to think about what they could be doing. You know? And um, I always had to run off to this class after my lesson, and it was right around lunchtime. And, um, Every time after the lesson, she'd be like, oh, do you want me to make you some crackers and peanut butter? And she'd open up the bottom drawer of her, drawer of her desk and she would just, you know, make a little like peanut butter and cracker sandwich and give it to you to like walk to your class and eat. And it was just great, you know, because it was like above and beyond. And it felt like your mom was there with you at college. <laughs> You cannot have that good a time if no one is serious enough about playing to play really well. That's the other big thing. Yeah. Playing at a level that's exciting and that's flexible and that where you can actually have a really good time playing is kind of amazing. Yeah. And there are enough of us to do that. Yeah. We're very lucky. Yeah. Chris Mortensen's playing I like a lot because she's fearless. Just fearless. And, and nine times out of 10, it works. I've heard the, the one time out of 10, and that's not even bad. But um, she's fearless, and every time I play with Chris, my, um, my courage rises. So my name is Josh Michael, and I teach horn at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst, and uh, this is my third year to, uh, teaching here. When I learned that she was retiring, I just, I, it was like my mind was blown, because I'm like, how are they going to replace her? You know, like she started right out of college and stayed there for her entire career and was really, really good at it and never like burned out. I was just like, that's, such a huge deal. How are they going to ever do this? And honestly, I feel like they've done a great job of it by hiring him. I think that was a, a really smart move. I would say he was a much anticipated and well planned for replacement for Laura Clock. From my very first class of five students to the class I handed over to Josh, I think it's a, a wonderful continuation and I'm really excited to see him as a player growing and developing. He's a terrific musician and a terrific teacher. And I know the students are really enjoying all that he has to offer. Um, you know, Laura was an institution at this, at this school for, uh, I guess since the 70s, she's been here. And, uh, you know, certainly has left a, a legacy that, that I don't feel pressure by, but I feel honored 
to, to continue. You know, I, I caution my students and myself about comparing ourselves to other people. Because everyone is kind of on, is on their own path, their own journey with this instrument. And the second you start comparing yourself to other horn players, you consider yourself either better than or worse than. You very rarely picture yourself up against another horn player and say, I'm exactly the same level as that person. <laughs> it's always a better than or worse than mentality. And I don't think that either one of those mentalities are a good mentality. They're both separating. They're, they both uh, have a degree of uh, ego to them. And um, I think a better approach is to just compare yourself to you. If you can compare yourself and say, yes, I'm a better horn player today than I was five years ago, you know, you're constantly making progress, then, you know, uh, kind of makes the other comparisons irrelevant, I think. That's the other thing is I think if you keep a good attitude about what horn playing is about and why we play music and you don't get into the big competitive side of things where it's all about being better than someone else, um, I think as soon as you get into the better than someone else game, you lose a lot of the collegiality. For sure. And we in this valley have a very nice relationship with each I, other. I think it is probably pretty special in this valley that we were yeah. able to have that. I'm sure that doesn't exist just everywhere. It, it can't. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, there, there aren't so many gigs to go around and you can't afford to bear ill will toward the people that you're going to play with on a regular basis. Jean is amazing. She has a grace about her playing that's really, when you sit next to her, I don't often, sometimes she'll be third at Smith and I'll be fourth, but often I'm a couple seats away. But um, when I hear her play, there's a strength, but it's a gentle strength. She's the, the linchpin of the horn community in this area. <laughs> I've heard her play chamber music. Um, I heard her play, what did I hear her play? Uh, Britain Serenade. It was so nimble and absolutely stunningly beautiful. Jean Jeffries does everything she can to keep me playing by inviting me to join her with their quartet when they need a sub or when they want to do quintets. So I'm, I'm still playing sometimes, but uh, not feeling quite that obligation. But Jean keeps me going, so I have her to thank for that. There have been a lot of people, and I respect them highly, who end up saying, I'm seeing this happen in my horn playing, and I'm not playing out anymore. I just, I'm, I'm I've had a great time. I'm going to play for my own enjoyment. I'm not going to. I'm not going to take jobs anymore. And I imagine uh, that'll eventually happen to me. Eventually happen to Chris. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, they hope not for move long, on in long time. <laughs> make some space for some other people. Yeah, there is that. And there are always lots of other people coming through the pipeline who deserve, you know, attention and. And we deserve to have the same sort of experience that we've enjoyed for so long. Yeah. I wouldn't want to deprive anyone of that, for sure.